Hello and welcome to the Spice Must Roll, Episode 0 of Shadows of Aquila. This is a Wrath and Glory campaign set into the Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, everyone on this this panel is a is big Warhammer 40k fan. I myself am a Warhammer 40k fan. We all paint minis and have followed the lore and stuff like this. So this is going to be a fun time um, and uh, much dumb fun is going to be happened happening here uh but as this is episode zero this was recorded before and or not live normally these will be live on saturdays at uh, 1 p.m eastern which is 10 a.m pacific and i believe it's 5 or 6 p.m uh, uh british summertime so uh, feel free to join us twitch.tv slash the astro pub but before we get started let's learn about all the various characters who are here we're going to start over here uh with atomic zero who are you uh where can they find you, and who are you here on uh, Shadows of Aquila? Hi, everyone. I am Atomic Zero. I have been various things over my life, but generally, uh, lately, I've been mostly in the TTRPG space. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TTV underscore Atomic Zero, as well on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Atomic Zero, where I host my own game on Thursday night, uh, 5e sci-fi campaign, and I'm also a part of various other uh TTRPG streams as of various other characters. Uh, I will be playing Magos Explorator and Techno Archaeologists Omega X-018. So I am playing an extremely technology forward uh, tech priest who is obsessed with uncovering and discovering uh, lost uh, technology. They seek to understand and they seek to uh, basically find the missing pieces of technology out in the unknown sections of space. Um, currently serving under an explorator fleet that is a part of this, uh, I guess, this general setting that has been going on with everything. Uh, they initially are from the Forge world of Ryza. They were actually born into the tech priest lifestyle and kind of risen up as more of a... Um, arc, uh, someone that was responsible for managing various data archives, things like that, and eventually transitioned over to the Explorer section of the Adeptus Mechanicus, where that led them to here. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, next, we've got uh, Farrick. Who are you? Where can they find you? And who are you here on the Shadows of Aquila? Hello, my name is Farrick Veer. I stream sometimes on Twitch under the name uh, Farrick Veer, so twitch.tv slash Farrick Veer. Um, I sometimes do Star Citizen, I sometimes do other games. Um, I pretty much play what I want on my channel. Uh, for this game, I will be playing the Space Wolf Uthar Logrifson, who is a Primaris Space Wolf. He is all around a fierce warrior, very fierce warrior, who's always eager for a good fight, but his specialty is shock attacks. He was raised in the company of Ragnar Blackmane, and that's, at some point in his life, he actually left the great company of Ragnar Blackmane to join the Death Watch. He still bears the Silver Pauldron of the Inquisition, and in that Death Watch company, he served with our primary Psyker, Tiberius Sycor. And he is, once he found out that Tiberius was with the Inquisitor, he immediately joined the expedition because he knew that there was going to be some kind of good fight here and some glory to be had. He is definitely, in one word to describe him, a glory seeker, for sure. Glory seeker. Nice. Um, yeah, and then we have, speaking of, of, of our primary Sycor, uh, Mr. Logan Plays, who are you, where can they find you, and who are you here on Shadows of Aquila? So, hi everyone, my name's Logan Plays, I stream live on Twitch four days a week, uh, that's Tuesday through Friday, and the rest of the time I have started up YouTube and TikTok as alternative platforms. Uh, so the content you can find on my YouTube channel is basically going to be sort of let's play first impressions of various brand new and not so new uh, titles, so new video games, etc. Let's do plenty of um, Star Citizen as well, it's kind of my got my jam um and on the youtube channel there will be usually the uh, reviews that i do of particular games as well as first impressions of again the stuff i've played on stream and the same on the tiktok as well 
where I do shorts. So basically a one minute hit of a brand new game of what you can look forward to and why you should buy it. Right, that out of the way. <laughs> uh, as for who I am on Wrath and Glory in Shadows of the Aquila, uh, my name is uh, Tiberius Seesaw. I am a Ultramarines Primaris Librarian. Um, now, uh, so let me let me give you a little backstory. So, of course, the uh, the Primaris were a taken from the gene stock of uh, aspirants that were around before the Horus Heresy or during it. Uh, so technically, I'm about ten thousand plus years old. It's, it's 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 an interesting place I've woken up to. Anyway, needs to say fought alongside the uh, the unnumbered sons during the Indomitus Crusade. And eventually, it was integrated into the Ultramarines proper, uh, as of course Rebute Gillum is my gene sire, um, and served alongside Cajus Sicarius in the Second Company of the Ultramarines. However, I was then called to duty by the uh, Death Watch as part of the Tithe. That is required from all chapters to serve the Death Watch, and as a result, was not on board and with Cato as their ships were lost in the warp. Uh, so that's how I'm here. That's how I'm alive, and uh, now I am back uh, in, in amongst my brothers of the Ultrians again. But I've been called back to service by the Shadows of the Inquisition. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, last on, but not least, we have uh, Tyrek. Tyrek. I don't know how to say it. Duran. Who are you, where can they find you, and uh, who do you play here on uh, Shadows of the Heel? Ahoy, I am Kirik Durhan, or Durhan, or however the hell you want to say it. Doesn't <laughs> matter to me. Uh, I am a seldom streamer. I'll stream when I have time, and I remember to actually do it. Uh, I'm on Twitch at Kirik Durhan, and I also have the Twitter that I don't use all that often. need to do that more. But I am playing uh, Bulgrok, a very... Loyal Bulgren, who just wants to be the bestest boy. He was picked up by the Inquisition, but probably the Inquisitor liked him because of whatever reason. He was with the Gravediggers beforehand and doesn't know why he's there, but he's there. That's good. He's the bestest boy. The bestest boy. I am the bestest, bestest boy. Boys. He also has, he's also a smart boy because he's got a bone. A bonehead. Got a bone. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very smart Bulgrin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I can count you. Of course, I am uh, uh, Paul Berserker One Batman Shelley, the um, kind of host of uh, the Astro Pub, uh, one of the the DMs here for uh, the for the Spice Must Roll, and I am going to be the resident DM, or as I like to call myself, the Chaos God, because my job is to destroy these folks, to to render the 40k universe. As, as it is. And so my, my role of chaos God will go from the various gods when I need to. <laughs> uh-huh. Basically, yeah, you're the fifth chaos God, the GM. Yes. As long <laughs> as it doesn't get too slow, Nashi, we're fine. <laughs> as, long as, as long as it stays within TOS, all right? <laughs> I can't get, I can't Brother, get too we slow, rounds for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So with that all discussed, we're going to have a very short session here because we're just going to kind of work through the very beginnings of where these folks meet up. And so let me set the stage for you all. You were all called to a single ship in the void uh, by a the Inquisitor, uh, whose name is... Uh, he's an Ordos Xenos Inquisitor, um, Wilk Vortops. So when you uh, have arrived at your own various points uh at you you're you're told to stay in the you're, you're asked to because no one's going to tell space marine anything uh, <laughs> uh and or or a magos of the adeptus mechanicus um <laughs> uh to ask to remain in the the um the the bay uh and so the first person to arrive is obviously uh bullgrock because bull has been there the entire time he's just been hanging out in the uh uh in 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 the 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 hangar bay uh, so, Bull, what are you doing while while you're waiting for all the other people to show up? Saying if there's anybody to play cards with, because even though he's an idiot, he likes to play with the small pieces of paper with other guardsmen. Okay, so you're you're, you're there playing <laughs> playing with some voidsmen uh, uh, who are playing some uh, some some card uh, card game, you know, over there. Uh, roll me a uh, just while we're waiting. Let me see if I can, what we should we should do the first roll of the game. Uh, so this is where I'm going to explain to the audience. This is a D6 system. Uh, the D6 system works where you get a pool of dice, and depending on how you roll, you succeed. There's usually a difficulty number that I will set, 
and the, uh, the used attributes or skills to be able to achieve this goal. So with this, we're gonna start with skills. Let's go with, um, hmm, what's a good one for this? Insight, give me an insight check. Uh, difficulty uh, three. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, so just click the roll, right? Yeah, just click the roll, you should go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Now, how do I make an insight check? Uh, so you go to skills and you see insight. You you all are not there quite yet. But, oh, uh, yeah. sorry. I'm just, I'm just yeah. asking for future reference. Okay. Yes. Right, got you, it. Go, you see the little di- little roll thing. You just click yep, that. I see it enough. Fine. Um, so, Bull, you are losing every hand, but you are having a good time. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the voidsmen are, are very happy that you're losing. Um, <laughs> uh, you're, you're giving <laughs> up your, your your little shiny shiny rocks or whatever the, whatever he would call uh, the crowns that you would get you get for for payment. Um, and everyone's having a good time. Uh, now the, the next person to arrive would be, uh, Omega. You arrive, uh, from a shuttle from the, your, your explorator ship is sent you, sent you over in a shuttle, uh, landed in the, the bay and disgorged you. What are you doing while you're waiting? You see a Bolgren, you see Voidsman walking around the, the, the hangar doing some things. You see a couple of, um, you know, uh, servitors doing, uh, mm-hmm. doing ma- maintenance and such, uh, a couple, uh, uh, tech adapts, you know, running around, you know, instructing the servitors, but it's mostly uh, the biggest, the biggest thing in the room is the Bulgrin sitting on a comically yep. small chair um, or, or like a comically small box while uh, with all these really much smaller voidsmen like playing cards on a, on a, uh, on a deck or on a, uh, yeah, so a, a crate. The first thing I do as I, as I, I walk in now, I, I will definitely say that the, uh, Omega is easily probably the, the smallest person here, maybe a, a slightly under six foot. Uh, and Omega, like most tech priests, especially at the Megos level, um, extremely metaled out. Uh, there's very actual little flesh uh, showing, but they still can see a semblance of humanity, which is one of the tenets of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, they have two large mechadendrites that are coming out of their person, among of other uh, ad- various types of augmentation. Most of their augmentation is mostly brain, head, and their mechadendrites. They're actually, they're, they are designed to infer, investigate, repair, and anything else that's completely tech- technologically forward. So it's like, it's, it's almost like in slow motion, like as soon as they step foot onto the vessel and get a view of everything, the mechadendrites as well as all of his the aspects and various other cogitators kind of all immediately let up and is just doing a once over of the entire uh the ship every single piece of technology they can see they are reaching out to the machine spirit with their mind impulse unit and they're just feeling out the machine spirit of this vessel along with all the other technology that's going on okay so give me a uh investigation check plus any bonuses you have for your your uh natural yep. bonuses so with all my other bonuses from all my augmentation, it comes to a total of 14 dice. Okay. So that is seven with three crits involved as well as uh, a five on the wrath. So n- nothing on the wrath. Nothing on the wrath. So this is where I'm going to explain a little yeah. bit about the wrath and the crits. So for, for uh, they need to get a four, five, or six to get an icon. An icon is a success. And if they get a six on the icon, they actually get an exalted icon, which counts as two. So in this case, um, they got seven, uh, with which included three exalted icons. Um, now the difficulty, I forgot to say the difficulty number, the difficulty number would be two for you because you are a Magos and this is pretty simple. Uh, so mm-hmm. you would have had, you could have easily moved over um, all of those exalted icons into to shifting. If you want to give something else, uh, shifting is uh, stuff like, uh, you know, additional uh, dice for damage or improve the mm. skills. Is there anything specifically you'd like to know about this? Anything? Because I'm going to give you is you basically have the full knowledge of the machine spirit of this of this vessel. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, do I detect any form of technology or equipment that shouldn't be here by sacred decree? Yes, instantly. Yeah. I had a feeling, <laughs> which um, which. This is going to be. This is something that also will come out of Omega's character as well. Even though they are an explorator, which seeks out unknown things, they technically tend to fall more radical in their viewing of things. 
Uh, he, they are actually more puritanical when it comes to the decrees of the Adeptus Mechanicus. So it's kind of like he's immediately almost in his head logging each individual piece of technology as like he's compiling a report to file like, later. Like a violation list. You know? Yeah, like it's literally <laughs> just like, and like exactly where they believe it's from and everything else. Like yeah. I will, I'm going to yeah file this to Mars oh. <laughs> once I'm done here. You 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 find uh, at least at least a dozen uh, Xeno blades, uh, Necron Xeno blades. Um, there is at least uh, one um, Eldari wraith construct somewhere inside this ship, and uh, there is an orc um, uh, an orc stampa somewhere mm -hmm. on the ship as well. Uh, you feel like it could be in pieces, like it's been disassembled. Um, yeah, it's only the fact that they are. In they were fallen told to come here from the Inquisition. This is the yeah. only reason why they don't they don't immediately spout off in a tirade. Okay. So, yeah, they just kind of wander off into the middle of the room as they're doing all this, and it's okay. from there they're just gonna like basically look over the shoulder of all associated uh, tech priests, uh, but he, they're not gonna actually interact with anyone. Not okay. their speed, not what they're looking for. They're like, someone will tell me where to go when. You know, when deemed necessary. Are you being stealthy about this, or are you being kind of more open? Not about? at all. No, okay. he is walking in like he's literally optical mechadendrite in faces. Sometimes, like it, okay. he has zero uh, concern with you know getting in the way. Okay, so so all of the the like tech ad apps and the tech priests that are running around are completely like like nervous, as nervous <laughs> as a as a <laughs> member of the next mechanicus would be. They just they're like they're like you're you're just they're like you know you know beginning to chant and like bring it bringing up like some some incense over over uh over like a damaged power relay and and then your your, your mega dead just kind of plops up and just is like mm, like like in, in invasive in there and they're like when you say nothing they just kind of keep looking back it's like oh God, i hope i'm doing okay i hope this is all right <laughs> your deviation from the sacred code shall be logged and filed give me thy designation <laughs> Uh, the designation you get is um, um, uh, Ti Tiberius uh, 0159 uh, for that one. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, well, we have... Well, <laughs> uh, by the way, Bull, uh, at some point you do notice this This uh, uh, much... I think he's pr you're probably taller than most of the other tech priests and tech adepts in the, in, in the room, I'd say. Uh, you see this big bundle of uh, of like mechadendrites and other uh, att attachments, kind of barely contained by a red robe, as it's the kind of or I guess it would be an orange robe because you're you're from from um, Riza. Technically, yeah, from Riza, yeah. yeah. So like just running around and and doing like little little uh, like just getting in other people's faces. So. Yeah, like immediately see the table of like flesh bags and it's like nope, and just immediately just ignores it. Okay. So, Bull, you see that, and you know that he's one of the one of the people you're told to look out for for from the uh, Inquisitor. Remember, shiny metal wire man. Okay, you just keep playing. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's next, all shiny rock. Next is um, uh, Primaris Librarian Tiberius uh, Sisor. This is Sisor, right? Sisor. 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 Yes. Um, you arrive on a meticulous absolutely like like <laughs> spotless thunderhawk like it shows up and it's it is it, it like the 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 entire ship looks like garbage compared to this when it comes in everything has been polished and and and, and perfect um and as you step out you see the same sort of thing you see a giant bulgrin which is probably one of the biggest things in the room sitting on a comically small uh crate playing cards with uh, some voidsmen uh, and you see other, uh, you know, uh, tech priests and tech adapts and, of course, lots and lots of servitors running around doing maintenance on ve vehicles and such. Uh, and you see this other, you know, rather, you know, tall, not tall for you, but, you know, obviously it's towering above other people. Uh, looks, looks like an orange robed uh, tech priest, which is standing above and just looks like it's they're supervising a bunch of different uh, uh, of the other techs, tech priests. So what do no. you do when you're there? So as I um as I thump down the uh, Thunderhawk ramp again, the armor is is a similarly polished to a perfect, meticulous parade shine. You'd never know it's seen combat. It looks like it's fresh from the factory, and uh, you know it's 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 been oiled to perfection. My cloak billowing 
as I come down. There's some sort of almost figure of uh, of legend. And uh, anyway, I so I, I'll um, right, I will let, sort of look around. Let me ask this yes. question: Is your cloak billowing because you're making it billow? Is it just always <laughs> billowing? It's like it's always blowing in the wind. There you go. That, see, that, you, you don't give away the trade secrets, you know? If, if you are going to be one of the Emperor's Angels of Death, then you have to have a few tricks up your sleeve, especially when you have psychic powers. Anyway, <laughs> Matt, the, thank you, mate. You, you throw me off now. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. That's fantastic. No, um, so I will, I will scan the uh, the interior of this hangar bay, but I also sense be whirring and clicking in the in my, uh, my helm as I am, of course, fully helmed and everything. Uh, Psycho Hood not, uh, notwithstanding, and I will be making a mental note of, of course, all of the entrances, the exits, the, you know, po I, I will look as though I'm some sort of auto sentry, you know, finding every single potential tactical situation, acquiring it, and working out a plan of attack or, in instance, defense, because that's a space marine, it's what they do. You know, we are we are weapons of war and nothing, and, uh, and you know, so anyway, after, uh, of course, Taking this scene in, I will note the uh, the Bulgrin sitting over um, on the on the um, this tiny little chair, um, and having been informed as to the compatriots that I will be joining, I will recognise them as one of those. Sort of with a sort of a, a, without a word, I'll stand as a sort of, a, a, of as a, as a statue almost, um, and it's a Bulgrin. I'm not going to be outwardly hostile but it is a tolerated mutated strain uh, you know strain it's tolerated but it's still technically a mutant so i'm not exactly thrilled about this before i'll then turn my gaze over to the uh, the tech magos who is currently harrying the other academics who who are around the um the hangar bay and i will uh, march toward them before uh, it's coming to a halt and uh, in in again through the vox grill well met, Tech Magos. I am Tiberius Seesaw, Primaris Ultramarine's librarian. I've been told we're going to be working together. Issue standard greeting. Hello, Primaris and librarian Tiberius Seesaw. I am Omega X018, Megas Explorator. It is a pleasure. Like White Magos, I have worked with your kind before. I'm sure you're, uh, Skill set will be most useful in the times ahead. Before I will sort of then um, uh, consider the the formal welcoming and greetings done and dealt with, and stand off to the side, hand on the hilt of my power axe, just uh, observing the situation and en enjoying the few glances that the uh, the deck hands and voidsmen give in my direction. Uh, you, you, the one thing you will notice is that you, the, the, the voidsmen and the deckhands don't seem, they seem to like notice that you're there, but they like, they acknowledge you're there and they're not, they, just, they seem to go back to what they're doing, um, which is odd for you because you're used to dealing with unmodified humans and when they see you, they lose their goddamn minds because they, they've never seen a space marine before. So. Absolutely, and this this will be noted by me, and uh, with a with a with a note of uh, almost res of respect, because of these these are obviously well trained, well drilled individuals who don't lose their nerve at the sight of a mere space brain type thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I'm I'm impressed at the uh, at the level of drill and uh, and uh, skill of these humans. Again, outside of Ultramar, okay, don't, the humans don't don't see uh, you know space marines. So, okay, I'll be I'll be very impressed at that. Uh, Sorry. what were we gonna say, Omega? Nothing. You're just good. Yeah, that's right. it. Uh, all right. Uh, can you also give me a uh a investigation check there, um, Tiberius? Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, da, 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 roll. Investi hang on. Investigation. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, eh. I rolled a zero. Apparently. Oh, Wrath Dice rolled a zero. Uh, icons rolled three. a three and a success and a critical. So you got you you got so you had one success and one one or one icon and one exalted icon. So uh, that would be enough. I was going to say just two. Uh, you notice that there are there's an emergency access to uh, to space next to the um, the entrance for like for the for the hangar. Plus, there's one entrance that's leading into the hallway and another entrance which is currently covered by a bunch of boxes. That obviously has is used for some sort of uh, not so or some more illicit purposes. It's obviously attempted to be masked 
but it is still there. So you do recognize that there is a another uh, uh, entry which is partially blocked. Right. Okay. Uh, so cool. That sounds good. All right. Then last to show up, we have um, uh, Uthar. He shows up. You know, your your Thunderhawk touches down, and uh, unlike the 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 Ultramarines Thunderhawk that came by, yours is looks like it's been through seventeen battles. Like it's it's been pot marked to heck. It has like uh, somehow attached like its giant or giant huge uh, Fenrisian uh, wolf hides are just stretched across it as it hangs down. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, like everyone in in there, like the smell this thing gives off as it comes down is is it smells like 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 gunpowder and blood is what it smells like when it comes in. Somehow it still manages to have this sort of this sort of this sort of almost feral smell to it as it lands. And the, the as it comes the 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 uh, ramp comes down and you are on the ship. What are you doing when you come and enter enter? Well, the first thing he's going to do is, as soon as he touches down on the deck, he's going to remove his helmet, taking a deep whiff of the environment, and kind of get a feel using his the keen sense of smell that the Space Wolves have. Mm -hmm. And uh, as he looks around, he's going to see Tiberius and zero in on him. Okay. Uh, give, me is, a, give me a give uh, me an investigation check real quickly, plus any bonuses that you have as a Space Wolf. Uh, let's see. Double check. Um, plus rank on test awareness tests. So mm -hmm. this wasn't really an awareness test. Oh, this is really. awareness. This is awareness. Yeah, I've been using the wrong one. It's okay. awareness. Use awareness. Yeah. Okay. So I get a plus based on sense of smell. It doesn't actually say in the rules what the plus is. Um, it doesn't for acute senses. I didn't see it in there specifically. Uh, where's my book? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Might have been like plus one or something, I guess. Uh, Hold on, I got it. it. Acute senses, pick one of your five senses whenever you make an awareness test, plus rank bonus dice. So however many you spent in your rank. Mm. Uh, so okay. are, your, oh, your rank, no. We're rank, rank four, right? Yeah, we're rank four. Okay, so, so yeah. plus four then. Yeah, so just yeah. make sure you add in, in that little thing four bonus dice for this and then, you know. All right, so you got it same yep. same same amount. So you you got three, but you got nothing on the wrath on the uh, the wrath die result. Um, by the way, what what did you get for the wrath die? Uh, zero by the look of it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, the, so the way that it's showing is that it's zero means you didn't get any successes on the wrath die, no icons on the wrath die. So okay. Uh, so if it says a one and it has a little green border around it, it means you have a uh, uh, like a exalted icon, which gives you glory. So. Uh, all right. So you have uh, three icons. You, you, your smell. You can you you immediately smell the uh, the scent of uh, uh, of Tiberius. Like you remember that smell anywhere. You can smell it. Um, the smell of being too clean. Yes, it's it's the smell of of like absence of smell. Uh, <laughs> uh, polished armor and shaving cream. Yes. Um, but you also smell uh, a Bulgrin, um, and you smell, uh, uh, you don't know if it's a tech priest, but it smells like a big tech priest, you know, uh, extra oils and scents, more, mm -hmm. more, something, something's a little bit bigger. Uh, and you also smell in your, in your, your smell, you smell um, something else, and you, it smells like Eldari. You don't see any Eldari, but you smell Eldari. Okay, so he's not going to make like a visible note of it. He's just going to kind of look around as he's walking over to Tiberius for a moment. As he picks up the Eldari, it's just kind of like quirking a brow for really quick. But at the same time, he's kind of running a hand over his head, which is this kind of shaved and trimmed mohawk mm -hmm. with like runes, rune tattoos of protection going along the sides of it. 
And as he approaches Tiberius, he's just going to clap him right on the shoulder and be like, Tiberius, you son of a bitch. It's been too long. Ah, oh, brother Ulthar. They say that the fang couldn't hold you bay. Brother, it is good to see you. Well met. I'll sort of clamp my, uh, clasp my, uh, my hand around his forearm in a warrior's grip. Mm-hmm. You wear the, uh, the symbol of the Death Watch well. How have you been? How about it? Tell me of your campaigns. Ah, uh, well, you know, you know very well of our campaigns. You could have, you could not have heard our legends of our battles on Fenris and uh, taking, retaking the Fenrisian system. Well, I hope you haven't been talking too loudly about our campaigns and battles in the Death Watch. You know as well as I do, we can't discuss those. Although, last time I saw you, you were in the more of a tyrannid. You're lucky I was able to blow his head off with his little psychic whatnot. I had that tyrannid dead to rights, and you know it. The way I, I saw it, right it was chewing through your armor. <laughs> Alright, as, as, as this is happening, the door slides open from right next to where you are, Bull, and in steps uh, a uh, elegant... How do I put this? Everything stops when he steps in. He just one boot steps in, and you see a man dressed in power armor, but you can barely tell there's power armor because he's got an elegant vest and a uh, uh, like a, like an overcoat, like a like a like a nice leather overcoat. He's got his hair slicked back entirely back, absolutely like pitch black. Uh, his face seems very, very pale, uh, and you can sense instantly, uh, Tiberius, that this is, a, a, he's a psyker. You just, just you, you picked it up right away. Um, yeah. From his emanations. And he looks over at the, most of you and goes, mm. well, I'm glad you've all uh, arrived. Come, we have much to discuss. And he just turns around and snaps. And when he snaps, Bull, you know, you instantly stand up when you, when you I, snaps. You didn't, you when I even, stand up. Yeah. When I, when I stand up, because I knew it knew. It boss, grabbed my, my shield and my maul, and my shield is being used for the table. So I pull that up <laughs> and send the cards and everything flying. Yeah. And go immediately following him. Over an intervox link that I've established with, uh, with Ulfa. And it appears this is our new employer. I just click my voice to uh, my box to the private channel. Indeed, it is. There is something about this that doesn't smell right. Oh, he's a psycho for sure. Well, let's soon see what he has to say. He has summed us from our chapters. He has, but I also smell an Eldari here. You sense it too. I do. Oh, maybe we'll be able to get some explanation from him. At this point, we're both walking behind yeah. uh, Bull. Uh, you know, we're sort of talking to each other, sort of just looking at each other. We're all, you, you, know, you can't see that we're talking because we're yeah. through the uh, Vox link. But yeah. we're, we are following along. Uh, yeah. All, all that would follow, all, all anyone would really hear is just muted clicks coming from our helmets. Okay. Uh, As Uthar slipped his back on in yeah, order to click on that Vox channel. Yeah. Uh, Omega, what are you doing? They would follow behind. Uh, the only reason why you can't tell the emotion that they're expressing is because they almost physically don't have one anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, it's like as much as a, as a Megas could, they are following behind in like a bad temper. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you also do recognize because you haven't physically tapped into it, but you do recognize the two space Marines are talking to each other. Oh yeah. Like yeah. my optical man, I did right. Completely, probably unapologetically just like, has like one sight on it all the time, like occasionally looking off to look at something else, but it's almost always like right back there, like right in the back of their heads. <laughs> like, oh yeah, okay. like if they're walking in front of me, it's just kind of like you know it. It has almost like a mind of its own. It always ex explores everything. Like I don't have almost everything I do is in vision, not with exactly auditory. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like they can pick up on it, but obviously not to the like the full extent of what's going on. All right. So you walk through the ship, and the ship is um, it's pretty. It's it's a fairly small ship. Uh, it's not very, it, it's, it seems much more akin to something like a rogue trader ship, though it seems a little bit bigger. Um, the, the hallways are barely big enough to fit, um, uh, uh, Bull and the, the two Primaris Marines. Um, 
So you kind of have to shrug down a little bit as you're walking through. Uh, but it's fairly typical of any Imperium naval vessel. Um, you, you see people kind of shuffling off to the side as you come come by, as you walk through. Uh, and eventually, he leads you through this winding path as you're going through. And I want everyone to give me an awareness check. Difficulty is five. A couple of clangs walking because Bull hits his head on the top of the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, this is everyone, yeah. So no one got it, but you do have a uh, a glory mark one on your glory tabs, if you can. Um, you keep just keep a note of it. You have one glory because um, uh, Tiberius, you got a, a glory roll. So this is where I'm going to stop a little bit and talk a little bit about about glory. Glory yeah, is uh, it's you can use it to increase a dice pool. So you can say you're doing a test. You can use glory points to increase your your dice by one. You can also use it to increase damage. You can also use it to increase critical um, successes. Uh, you can also use it to seize the initiative. So everyone in the group gets the glory pool, and and you all can choose if someone wants to use the glory pool or not. So you can someone go like, hey, I'm going to use a glory pool for this, and everyone can be cool with it. But if you get a glory, then everyone can use it. Uh, you, can, you can also use it. Uh, and your um, wrath is something you all have. So everyone has two except for... Uh, Tiberius, you have four because of your ability that you chose at the very, the very beginning. So you have four wrath, but everybody else has two. Uh, and you can use wrath similar way. You can uh, uh, use them for various different aspects or similar things to, to change the uh, real failures, to restore shock, um, improve some, some checks, and uh, also just to add narrative flair to any action you do. So, See, the uh, ultramarine is already being helpful. I've already yeah. given you guys a wrath point. Be happy. Uh, glory point, yeah, glory point. Sorry, glory so, point, my mistake, sorry. So no one picks up on everything, but Tiberius, you just, there is a bad feeling. Your psychic sense just is, there is something off. Now you've dealt with Inquisitors I'll, before, but Yeah, have, having dealt off. with Inquisitors, I'll, I'll, I'll understand that this is kind of cut out for the course. This is a little, a little extra. Um, and needless to say, whilst outwardly nothing changes, uh, inwardly, I am prepared for whatever. I am starting to mentally prepare myself for whatever it might be because I don't like the feeling. Okay. Every every keen sense is saying danger potentially. Mm -hmm. And something specifically with the Inquisitor. So uh, as he leads you through this long winding path, he eventually opens up and you see this large chamber, this huge chamber with like bookshelves of, of like you know vellum books, like paper books all over the walls. Uh, and a big hollow, and it looks it looks like a disaster zone, like something someone is. He's just like books around. There's papers just strewn about. And he walks in, and he kind of elegantly takes a seat on this nice big plush chair, and he goes, "Make yourselves at home." What are y'all doing? So, walking in, um, I'll sort of stand off to one side, and uh, as a, as a mark of obviously respect to the Inquisitor, the Inquisition, uh, I'll obviously remove my helmet and clamp my clamp it to my side. Uh, and okay. sort of uh, just stand effectively with my sort of again hand on the hilt of my uh, my power axe, uh, my force axe. Uthar. Uthar is actually uh, mimicking Tiberius with the same gesture, removing his helmet and putting it on his belt, hand on the hilt of his force axe, and the other hand is actually on the hilt of his uh, heavy bolt pistol. Okay, Omega. This kind of stands in the middle of the room. Like, there's no. Like, Almost practically does absolutely nothing in response when they say it. Okay. Uh, Bull. Uh, finds a chair and sits down and probably smashes it by accident. Give me a... Um, gosh, let me give you a good one for this. Because this would be the first time you were in here. Uh, give me a uh, insight check. And if you, if you pass... Difficulty two. If you pass this then you don't find a chair that'll break it. But if you get, if you just barely pass it, you'll find a very comically small chair. <laughs> no. Oh, and you got a complication on the rap ball. Yes! Okay. Oh, no. Let's, let's, okay. So here's, here's where the cool thing parts about it. If you get a, if you get a one on a wrath die, because every dice includes at least one wrath die. Um, if you get a one on the wrath die, you have a complication. 
Now, the cool thing about Wrath and Glory is that the complication is not just me, it's also the, the player who, who got the complication. We get to decide together what that's going to be. So what, what, what would you say is a fair complication for finding a chair that you smashed? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Maul flying out of his hands, maybe? Or just the shield falling over and breaking something else? Okay, yeah, I like, I like the, the shield falling over. All right, so uh, here, this is what will happen. You sit down in the chair, and this chair is like three sizes too small for you. And you sit down on it, and it immediately just under your weight. And you fall down. As you fall down, your shield loses, you lose the grip of your shield. It uh, falls down, bounces, clangs off of the, the, the ground, just echoes through the, through the thing, and then hits a book. The book tips up, flies through the air, smacks into a, uh, uh, into a, a one of the, like, uh, shelves of books and it starts to tip over. And as it starts to tip over, uh, the, uh, the gentleman who's sitting there just kind of reaches out a, like one finger and the, the book shelf stops moving and moves back. And then you find the, the, the shield raises back up into bull's hands just as he looks at it. And then he puts it down and looks at you bull and goes, that was bad bull. You should know. Yeah. That. <laughs> Um, do. then he goes I don't call in my favors lightly you all owe me something I've saved your lives or I have protected something value to you and now I need you to do something for me and he kind of waves his hand towards the hollow emitter in front of him this kind of hollow table and kind of up pops a little symbol of three stones uh can i get a uh let's see all of y'all can give me an insight check do any of you have like any kind of knowledge of xeno i'd imagine that the two death watch would probably give i'll give you a bonus for that the dice for yeah this. we probably would have as just as a, it's not oh. all on our sheets but we would probably have yeah. some insight so, so go ahead and add um so when you look when you're doing the roll there's a section mm -hmm. for that roll that says uh bonus dice so you just go ahead and add that in there for this this roll for um, uh, is it insight correct insight yes and you have a bonus um, as well omega because of your archaeologist specialties what was the bonus plus b plus yeah. two, plus two, oh, plus two okay. yeah for, for all of you the only one who doesn't have bonus is bull <laughs> bull no nothing bull no smash And the difficulty of this was going to be uh, four, so. Uh, no. You know. <laughs> Even with the bonus, there's no way I could physically get it. <laughs> T Tiberius, again, adds one more to the glory die, so you have two more glory die in the pool. Um, so you could use one of those glory die to uh, to get a critical, because you wanted to use it, um, or you can still hold on to it, so now you have two glory die. I could hold on to it for now. Okay. to bank these relators. You look at it. You just—it doesn't look right um, uh, when you're when you're looking at it, and uh, they just look like three stones. You know that there's something off about them, but there's like all all of you except for Bull. Bull just sees three stones. Uh, he looks at there and goes, "Have you heard of the tears of Shagarok?" With my interest peaked, I'll lean in closer and I'll be studying these stones on the on the hollow lith and I I will shake I will sort of shake my head just like this um before saying there isn't something quite right about these stones. They are not stones. As far as I know, as far as my research can tell, these are Eldari. Why am I blanking on the name of them? Soul stones. But not like any soul stones I have ever heard of before. Legend says that they are pieces of Shagarok himself. I've even found references from, from uh, other tones of these being called the Sweat of Gork and Mork. They've been called the uh blessings of the star, the star gods. 
They have multiple references. But I think I know where they are. These are very powerful. I'm trying to think of where fit. Very powerful. Artifacts? Artifacts, thank you. Artifacts of the. Uh, uh, of of some Xenos origin. I cannot even determine if they are Aldari in origin. Though they are the ones who have the most references to it. As, a, in, as a li- Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was saying, as a librarian, of course, part of my studies is to study ancient lore and tomes, and uh, I'll take a, a couple of steps forward to cl- closely examine these. Um, as as I as I watch them sort of again floating in midair, um, I will sort of scratch my uh, sort of take a gauntleted hand and sort of uh, stroke my chin, going. So, Inquisitor, if I may, you wish to acquire potentially corrupted Xeno artifacts of an unknown origin and power. To what end? To destroy them. They are too powerful to be handed in any, any one person. But I, none of us in the room, have the ability to contain or destroy these artifacts. However, I have a contact. He's on the second planet of this system. He kind of just watches over and you see the kind of a uh, hollow readout of the, the star system. Two stars and about 12 planets orbiting, plus a couple of uh, asteroids, belts, and around. These three are in this system. I've contacted my contact, and he will meet you on the second planet of this system once you've acquired them. He's even graciously agreed to exchange this. For some reason, he required not just a service. He wanted to give us a gift of his beneficence. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Hold, my, my brother, hold. An artifact of this power given to a third-party contact, if we have not the power to destroy such a despicable Xenos, I'll almost spit the word, uh, creation, uh, how is this individual going to be any more powerful than a inquisitor such as yourself and the members of this party? He is in possession of ancient tools. Tools that are quite heretical. And he looks over at you, Omega. Uh, (laughs) Tools that would, even I, in my position of the Inquisition, would get me uh, quite disbarred. Quite outcast from my At this point, Uthar turns around. He's actually so eager to get this done. (laughs) He actually... Turns and leaves the room, heading towards the hangars again. I'm I will be, be waiting on the ship. <laughs> I'm going to turn around and I'm going to use. I, I I don't know. Okay, I'm going to ask if I could do this. Yeah. I'd like to basically try and hold him in place, just with some yeah. psychic will, just to yeah. just to keep him in place and be like, I shake my head. Manners, <laughs> brother. Okay, let me give me give me a moment. Um, so give me a. Like, there's actually sort of a power you have like this. It's called um. I have compel. Could I use that? Yeah, yeah. You can use compel on him. Um, compel. So that's it. Does against his a TN, a, a TN, a DN five. So you have to roll um, the roll the dice, which is a little dice icon. There should help um, under your powers. Right. Just looking for that now. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So is it the the little singular dice icon, or is it the red one? Uh, I think it's let's see what it was. new system. <laughs> Yeah, new system for us. Uh, yeah, make the psychic mastery skill test. The, the first one that's right next to, that's under the simple, the, the, the singular one, not the one that's all the other ones. So this one. Nope, that's the wrong one. This one. Is that correct? Have I done that correctly? Yes, yes, you did. Um, Excellent. And you got a uh, glory <laughs> uh, or a, or a uh, critical <laughs> for this one. So... You can choose to add any flair for this, but you need to pass a DN4 wheel test there, uh, Uthar. So dif- dif- the difficulty is four. Uh, yeah. Okay, there so you go. got a three. 
So yeah, you, you, you didn't quite fail. It didn't quite succeed, but you got a three. Um, no, you got more than three. You got three plus... Okay, so this is this is doing weird things. Uh, it's you, not counting. It's not counting the the sixes as two. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, so you actually you actually succeed. So you say hold, brother, and you see him hesitate for a moment and then just keep going. <laughs> I'll, 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 say, I'll shake my head and say, I'll just say, always strong will that one. He he kind of shrugs and says, he's. He's a son of Fenris. He, he just right? kind of waves his hand as, <laughs> as, he, as he's going. He's like, come, come. As, as Glory as waits it, for no one. As it appears that Tiberius has become some sort of uh, mediator for the party, <laughs> I, will, I will look apologetically toward the Inquisitor and simply shrug these enormous pauldrons and just go, my apologies for my brother's behavior. He was like this in the Death Watch as well. I remember him fondly from the Death Watch. He was always this way. He will always be this way. It is, it is of his kind. And he kind of sighs and, and looks over at Bull and goes, Bull, go make sure yes, that the go make sure that the, the wolf is not causing any too much trouble. Yes, what? Gets up and trots along. Alright, Bull, at this point I want you to give me an awareness test of de- difficulty seven. We have to get seven successes. Uh, okay, so you don't see this, uh, but you do catch. Oh, and you have a complication. Yeah, he yeah crit. No. <laughs> he crit failed. Mm-hmm. Oh, love it. Walks into door. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, you you walk as you're walking through this the, through the door. Um, you uh, think you see the wolf on the other side of the door. So you turn to look on the other side of the door, and you see nothing. And then you keep walking. Um, there's, there's a reason why. I'm going to make you do random awareness checks here for a moment, for, for a bit. Uh, all right. With that, the Inquisitor is simply going to pull up another, you know, sw- swap the scene again to another, uh, is, like, this is a hollow image again to another thing. And it's a picture of a, um, uh, of a Valkyrie dropship. And he says, I will loan you one of my best pilots. He is a veteran of the Scions, uh, of the, the Tempestus Scions, and uh, is almost 20 years of, of, of service under me. Treat him well. I want him back. Or not, we will uh, treat the, uh, the brothers and sisters of the Sempestus Sons with as much reverence as brothers of our own. I will, I sort of, not, not again, as an ultramarine, I'm more used to working with humans and human yeah. forces than other space marines, so I will respect the fact that this is a pretty high station, and this guy, 20 years in the service of an Inquisitor, he's got to yeah. have some skills. He's got to have mad uh, skills. <laughs> you'll notice that he care, He specifically pointed out, and this is for you too, Omega, he specifically pointed out uh, that he wanted the Scion back. <laughs> so the Valkyrie's okay, he just wants the, he wants, he wants the Scion back. Yeah. Inquisitor, there is concern for this situation. Well, yeah. I'm good to go, right? Yeah, you're good to go. All right, so, excellent. We'll see you, see you next week. So Uthar yep, is going to... next week. B- 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 Sorry uh, about that. It's cool. Uh, there we go. There we go. Go okay, ahead, right. Omega. I love you, man. <laughs> Inquisitor, there are concerns for this situation. This speaks of... And you see, they actually take a moment to process because... They realize, you know, it is an Inquisitor, obviously, so they're yeah. trying to, like, figure out the right ways. There is concerns for the corruption of possible Xenos heresy, as you have explained it. The fraternization and interactions with such artifacts and beings is of a concern. Or oh, watch your brother for his sin of heresy is thy sin of tolerance. Macarian 16.4. I'll, I'll nod my head at this and say, Magos makes a good point. We are going to be dealing with an unknown entity. What are the containment protocols and the proper operational parameters to retrieve this artifact and have it not, say, for example, corrupt one of our own? Anyone who is in possession 
of one of these artifacts must be purged. No one who has knowledge of this should live. The only exception is my contact. And even then, if you can manage, do what you can to destroy this without talking to my contact. He is a unusual type. And I'd rather not give him anything far too powerful. Even if he understands that it must be destroyed. Inquisitor, I will do my duty to the Omnissiah and the Eternal Emperor to follow your parameters as best I can, but I will not hesitate to take measures to prevent the spread and the indoctrination of the heresy. I expect nothing less, Magos. And then with that... He and in this, we agree. With that, he, he kind of goes, he kind of claps his hands, and out of the shadows uh, steps uh, a, a uh, like, just out of, just seems like just from, uh, ex like exit from sad shadows is a man who has his face, like, seems like he had been through, like, fights, like, combat, some scarring, some burn marks. His face is barely held together with uh, bionics and, uh, like, just what little skin remains of his face. Um, who's st second in, in um, uh, not flak armor, it's, uh, the other armor, the... Carapace? Uh, carapace armor, I think, yes, the, yep. the, the, the Scion armor, which is... The in, chunkier stuff, yeah, 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 it's, it's yeah. carapace armor. Uh, with, <clears throat> with black and gold trim, um, and, uh, he, he steps forward and, uh, and nods and looks at you and goes... My name is Malak. Malak is it. I am your pilot. I am nothing else other than that. He, he stares directly at both of you as you're there and goes, I am under the Inquisitor's orders, not yours. But if you need my assistance, I will do endeavor to help. And then he looks over at you, uh, <laughs> quite like directly in the eye, Tiberius, and goes, don't scratch my ship, and then walks uh, walks out, like. I with with a, with a with a just a. I wouldn't be almost taken aback by this because. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm used to not paying. I'm used to. <laughs> I'm used to human something reverence. Yeah. Not this. This is yeah. like yeah. I've been taught to by my old like training com scout commander. Yeah. And I, I'll go. Uh, uh, well met, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mechadendra is like all the way up and down this individual. He's like and, taken back by the fe the, sheer, the fact that they would just talk to an Astartes like that. I'm just yeah. like, mm. he, he will, he, as the Mechadendrite comes back, he looks directly in the Mechadendrite and goes, and goes, I am not a servitor. And then just like he, he, he looks like almost like he's about to spit at the Mechadendrite and then realizes it was probably a mistake and just keeps walking. Like he is, well, he's a grump. He's grumpy. <laughs> he is very grumpy. Half, <laughs> half turning around to face the Inquisitor once more. So I'm sort of like like this. I'll look over my shoulder and see. Let's just say I can see why you keep him around. He saved me by killing a a a, a, a what are they? A bloodthirster with his bare hands and a knife. Surely you jest. Why do you think I keep him around? Of all the Inquisitors I have had the pleasure, in inverted commas, working with, you are fast becoming one of the more interesting ones. I endeavor not to be. The less interesting I am, the longer I live. Naturally, and, for one of your order. And then he, he kind of gestures. Good luck hunting. Or, how does it say, is, if you say it, uh, good hunting luck? I, I don't know how, to, how the, the, the phrase goes. Good hunting, Inquisitor, and then I will sort of uh, clasp my uh, my fist to my shoulder, my uh, my my pauldron. Uh, sorry, my chest, bash it against, and just say, "Arjun, another. We will go and do this in the name of the Emperor." And uh, this is this is another thing you both note is that he actually makes the sign of the uh, Aquila uh, on his chest as he does this, and kind of bows a little bit before sitting down. You've never seen an Inquisitor do that. Um, all right. Omega doesn't. 
really do much in terms of a goodbye. If anything, it's basically just like we're done. He just literally just turns and starts walking it's with walking uh, Tiberius. But yeah, yeah like there's no there, there's like a pause that kind of might show some kind of mental like mental processing. But it really is just like we're done here. Turn, walk. Yeah, and it, it, it like falls in step with Tiberius as best as they can. It's ex exactly the same. I mean, as soon as the the salute is met, I will literally turn on my heel and march out, replacing my helmet once more, and uh, just make sure my pace is 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 over one that the uh, the Magos can continue to follow along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna kind of fast forward for this because we're gonna get to, get to the end here. As you're walking down the corridors, everything seems to be okay, but there seems to be an oddness. Give me an awareness uh, difficulty two for both of you. Okay. Uh, skills, uh, awareness. Oop. I have rolled a three, I believe. No, that's a. What have I? What have I rolled? So you, I you, got, got, uh, you got three, three, uh, three successes, but you got two. Three success. Yeah, so you got three, three successes and a critical success. So you actually have four yeah. successes. Yeah. Excellent. I had six successes and then, yeah, uh, a four on the wrath, but nothing, yeah. Since six successes, so, yeah. Good. Do you want to add more glory to um, your pools? Because you have, yeah, you you only, the difficulty was two, and you have mm -hmm. one, two, three, I four, could push five, it. Five, six, yeah. six. Yeah, you can push if you want to. So this is the last thing I'll talk about, which is the, um, the shifting system. Where shifting, yep. you can Rift. bank icons as glory, or you can give additional dice for damage or improve the tasks. So if you want to like get more, attention. I'll, yeah, I'll bank. I'll bank it for the glory. Well, let's let's start padding out that glory meter now because we might just need well, it in the future. Yeah, if I might ask, will glory transfer from session to session? Yes, it'll, oh, it'll yeah, transfer so, okay. every session. In that case, yeah. yes, I'll definitely save yeah. glory for now. So then, so, yeah, so that would that still leaves me with yeah five total successes. Yeah, you'd only shift if you are way over your successes. So exactly, say, yeah. The difficulty was like say three, and you got three successes, and then an additional like critical success. Then you can move that exalted icon into a glory yeah. thing. So yeah. All right, so you both ca catch on pretty quickly, and the um, and uh, what did I call him again? Uh, Malik. 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 I was Malik, yeah. Carius, but I was right. Malik also seems to catch on, and you notice that. His hand is, as he's walking, is slowly moving to his knife and it kind of just gently rests it on his knife. Uh, he's got his um, ha uh, hotshot lads gun is, is attached to his backpack as he's moving. Um, and uh, uh, he's, he's very, very, very careful. He's still keeping the pace. He's not even breaking his stride as he's doing this. But as he does, he kind of looks back and just kind of gives you a look, which is effectively a, where there's something off here. I um, in in response, I will in, in, incline my head and sort of just nod, just ever so imperceivably. Yeah, you know. Uh, and uh, you're muted, by the way. I was gonna, I was gonna see. Could I click on my? Oh, what the hell is it? My aspects to try to see if I can detect any forms of life. Or like movement within, I forget the, the range, it's like 50 meters or something like that. Yeah, you can. Um, uh, whilst that's occurring, I'd also like to use my Psy Science uh, skill to scan for any sort of uh, psychic presences or okay. warp shenanigans. So give me that, uh, the power, let me look at the difficulty for that. Uh, it is three, difficulty three. So Yeah, and the first one you rolled was fine. The The... When you did the before, the use uh, does does dam. Oh, it's not damage. It's one d three. Uh, I believe that was correct. I could be mistaken. Yes, let me double check. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's one d six. Is the is the test not one d three? Um. Okay, so, so in that case, what do I? What do I? So I click my. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen, just for a moment. I'm still learning the system. We're still I, learning I the systems as well. Yeah. yeah. My, my learning of the system, the D20 systems, is a little off. Um, so I click the. Oh, right. I apologize. So the actual icons themselves, the little one that shows the three, is a, is a D3. The next one's a D6, and there's two yeah. D6. Yeah. So, so I need to click the D6 one. If you select the one that says, if you look, you see psychic mastery, and then you see a uh, linked attribute willpower, you keep going down the line, you'll see a little uh, D6. If you hover over it, it'll say, make a psychic mastery skill test. And that's what you need to do. Okay. 
At just and Paul, my all specs. So I have activate a combat action to detect energy emissions, motion, and other life signs within fifty meters. Then okay. I click on my all specs. Okay. Ah, right. My apologies. Now I see it. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Right. It's so a little. It's that, to be fair. It's not easy. It's it's got all the information, but it's very difficult. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, though. Anyway, there yeah. we go. So, um, uh, the difficulty would be two. You recognize that there is some. Definitely some psychic shenanigans going on. And um, your Auspex array, and you get it in the same direction of the where, where you're, you're walking. And the Auspex array also catches um, that, it catches something that's weird. There is no signs of life within 50 meters. Nothing. Except for Bull and uh, uh, Uther. Uth, uh, Uthar. Uh, they're both in the hangar bay, just standing there. And with we're going to cut to Bull. Bull, as you walk in behind Uthar, Uthar has his helmet on, and he's holding his axe and his pistol, and he's looking around. Give me an awareness check, Bull. Yeah. Let's see how well this works. <laughs> Another. Uh, okay, so you're looking around to see what's going on. So what would be a complication? Something that distracts him, maybe? Uh, server score or server to the, blah, 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 the skull thingies that float about. Server skull. <laughs> yeah, yes. server skull. Uh, there's no server skulls. There's nothing. Um, uh, well, yeah, the cards are the shinies from the card game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you'll you'll notice that the like the cards are 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 like you see the little shinies that are still there. But the one thing you notice, like just passively. There's nobody in the um, in the thing. This this place was filled with people when you left only a couple minutes Where'd ago. Where buddies go? Now they're all gone. There's no one there. Uh, and then so shortly after, you see you hear the door open and out steps uh, very casually steps uh, uh, a scion uh, with his helmet off, his helmet's clipped to his side, uh, kind of holding his knife and kind of. Uh, his other hand resting to the side as he walks up behind uh, Uthar. And you, the rest of you, you both walk in and notice the same thing. There's nobody there. There's the Valkyrie that's there, and there's nobody else. I'll immediately draw my uh, my, my uh, force axe at this point, and uh, again, with my helmeted uh, voice, just say, Where the deckhands? This place had over a hundred personnel before. You muted. He's muted, yes. My systems show there are no other life forms. And Bold, now you recognize that there's just nobody else there. Immediate stance of melee. All right. Tank as mode. You, as you, um, as you uh, get into the melee stance and as you pull out your, your force axe, um, you see a shimmer as a, a figure like kind of steps out from, from, a, from a distant kind of catwalk nearby, uh, and you recognize it immediately as an Eldari ranger with his long, long uh, uh, weapon, his long-barreled weapon pointed at you, and you see th four other shimmers just emerge as if like they just stepped open, like they opened a cloak, and you can, start, you can see them standing around the... Uh, uh, the... Uh, the Valkyrie. One is immaculately dressed. He's got a nice, uh, nice suit, a nice uh, kind of some some garish attire. He's like his his back. He's got a cloak made out of uh, some sort of like lizard skin, like fringed with fine golden uh, fur. Um, and he 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 just kind of smirks as he sits there. And he 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 very very arrogantly poses with with his. Uh, with a sword in front of him, kind of tipped down. Uh, and he looks at you and goes, Are you going somewhere? And with that, we're going to end this session. Ooh, I love a cliffhanger. I love a cliffhanger, <laughs> I do. <laughs> so Bloody Xenos. We, we, uh, we have a tradition in, in uh, the this, this Spice Must Roll where uh, everyone says their favorite moments from, uh, from the episode and uh, you know, kind of going around. So let's start with... Um, uh, uh, Tyrek, Duran, Duran. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your favorite moment from the episode? Breaking a chair. 
<laughs> <Breaking a chair. laughs> uh, uh, Logan, your favorite moment from the episode? Um, probably the assertion that my cloak was billowing via just my own psychic desire to just look <laughs> that magnificent, that vain. That th- that, that whole <laughs> that idea great. of like like the like there's an, always a constant wind blowing. So yeah, just, just, like, my, my, my hair's always just perfectly rustling into yeah. one direction. <laughs> The ventilation <laughs> systems need to be adjusted. <laughs> uh, uh, atomic. Favorite moment. Probably all of Bulgrok's complications. <laughs> like, <laughs> what after? Like, I feel like if Megas could have humor, it'd just be like every time something happens, it's just like the Mega Dendrite captured it. it just like, <laughs> well, Bulgrok is here for comic relief. That's yeah. really it. <laughs> like, every little thing that could have went wrong went wrong. Um. I will say I liked I uh, I I can't say that I don't like the scion because I want him to make to be curmudgeonly and angry and and grumpy and um, to see how far he can push before before a space marine crushes his skull. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he's great and yeah, that's this is going to be an interesting relationship, even if it's short lived. Yes, <laughs> uh, even an right. and he has so much tolerance. Anyway, sorry, I apologize. So we're gonna we're gonna we're we're gonna wrap this up here and thank you for all for watching. We'll start off very beginning of next episode with combat. <laughs> so we're gonna go, go in, oh. write it live, and we're all gonna go straight into combat. So and I'm gonna Love play it. around this be, be a little bit more long term because I know it's gonna take some time for us to get the handle of combat, but I guarantee you it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty much everything we've been doing now, um, except for uh just with weapons and damage. So uh, all right. good to me. Thank you all for watching. Again, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, make sure you go to um, Atomics and Farrick and Look and Plays. Um, uh, go to all, and, and Pyrek, go to their, their Twitch. Make sure you subscribe to them on YouTube. Like their videos. Go catch their stuff. Um, it, they're all really good content creators and worth your time, worth your effort. So thank you again. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>